Hey guys, today I'm back in Siege, and I wanted to try making a mechanical lock. Now I have limited knowledge of how locks work, so this should be fun. So let's get right into it. So I'm starting off with a sandbox like I usually do, and the first thing I want to do is just build up the lock body. Now I wasn't entirely sure what kind of lock I wanted to make, I was thinking maybe a combination lock or some sort of key, but whatever I was going to need to do, I was going to need some sort of lock body and pins, so that's what I wanted to build up first. So I also wanted to see how I was going to make pins work and just experiment with that. So my first thought was using a piston to push up and down the pins, just temporarily. I want to use mechanical linkages later, since that's cooler, but the pistons are way easier to work with since I could just put it down and immediately they just work. So I built up a little pin and a little sleeve for it to ride in, and you can see here as I push up and down the pin with the piston, it moves up and down. So that actually worked better than I thought. I was figuring something weird was going to happen with clipping or something, so nice. So the next thing I wanted to do was improve my sleeve design and just make the whole thing a little bit more robust. So I added back in my piston and see here, kind of forgot to pin everything in place so it all just fell down. So now after pinning everything, I can get the piston to push up and down this pin and it sort of works. So you might wonder why there's a gap in between these two sleeves. And basically the reason is I'm going to have two pins stacked on top of each other, disconnected from each other. Only when the piston is extended will the two pins have a gap in between them where the sleeves have a gap in between them. And what this will allow me to do is rotate the bottom sleeve out of the way without either of the pins binding. So I have no way to rotate it right now, so you can really only see that it lines up correctly. So to make that work, I put the bottom sleeve onto a bunch of hinges, and it's going to allow me to rotate them. Then I just had to brace it all together, brace it to the hinges underneath. And you can see here, when it's not extended, the pins end up binding and won't let the bottom sleeve rotate. But if I extend the piston, the pins line up just right, that their gap lines up with the sleeves, and I'm able to rotate it. So technically that's a lock. It's not a very good lock though, because, well, it only has one pin. So it'd be pretty easy to either guess the combination or just like jiggle open. So I'm adding on a bunch more pins like this. And basically at first I just wanted to copy this directly over, but I realized I could shrink the design quite a bit if it just borrowed some of the side walls of the sleeves. So I did that and put it all together. And now I have two pins. But I thought four was probably gonna be the best number. I don't really know why I decided on that, it just seemed about right. So I did all that, and then everything immediately exploded. So I thought at first it was my fault for not pinning everything, which actually was part of the problem. But the bigger issue is you can actually see here, this piston, when I expand it, there's now two pistons. Basically what I thought I did is when I was copying everything over, I accidentally hit the copy button and then forgot to move everything. Now it wasn't the biggest deal to fix this, I just had to delete that extra copy. So I just did a bit more bracing, and after that, I tried out the lock, I expanded everything, and it's still opened. So the next thing I wanted to do was add a few more pistons to some of the pins, because having all of the pins expand by the same amount to open up the lock is a little insecure, and just adding a little bit of variety in makes the lock a lot harder to guess. So after I did that, it worked, it expanded right, but the pins now were settling at the wrong heights, since now the second and third pistons are expanding further than the first one was. So I just had to remake the pins so that when they're fully expanded, they're in the unlocked position. And after I did that, it seemed to open, but there was a big problem. So the second and third pins have their pistons expand further, since I added more pistons. But that means that now they're expanding so far, they're getting caught in that bottom sleeve. And when they do that, that sleeve can't really rotate out of the way, since it's being held in place by those extra pistons stuck inside. Now after I contracted it, it seemed to work fine, it seemed to rotate out of the way. So my solution to this was to move down all of the pistons so that they just rest lower, so that when they're fully expanded, they never enter the sleeve. Instead, just the pins are in there. So after I did that, it all seemed to expand right, but the pins now were resting too low, they were two blocks too low. So to fix that, I just had to edit all the pins. And after I did that and gave it a little bit of coercion, I was eventually able to expand it all the way. But I also realized that third pin I had there with three pistons stacked on top of it was actually still too high, and when it was fully expanded, it was just barely still inside of the sleeve. So it's still gonna get caught when I tried to rotate. So what I did is just raised up the sleeve a little bit more, just so that it wouldn't happen. I then rebraced it to the hinges, but I also realized there's really no reason for me to rotate the pistons with the rest of the sleeve. It's a little less convenient for mechanical designs, and at the end I'll show you that sort of happens, but it ends up just working out and solves a lot of my bigger problems here. You can see now as I expand out all the pistons, eventually I'm able to get it out of the way of the pins, and it falls straight down. Now the next thing I wanted to do is add in a little bit more variety to the lock. So instead of just having it so that I hit a button and expands all the pistons and the lock opens, I wanted it to be a little more challenging than that. So I added three pistons to all of the pins, and what this means is it's a lot harder to just expand the pistons and then open the lock. You need to expand the right number of pistons on each pin to get the pins at the right height so that it'll be able to rotate the lock. I'm also adding some smooth surface blocks in here and then shrinking them a bit. And what this does makes it a lot easier for the pins to be able to rub past each other when they're at the correct height. I found that the wooden blocks ended up kind of grabbing 
uh, having a lot of friction, so this ended up helping a lot. So another simple thing I wanted to do was add in a little bit of a spring here, and what this does is holds in the top set of pins, so that when the lock body gets rotated, they're at least held in by something, because otherwise they just fall straight out of the top, and I'm gonna be unable to relock the lock since all the pins are now gonna be missing. So just by doing this, it holds them in place. But I found that the springs were actually adding a lot of force down into the pistons, and now things weren't expanding to the right height. So I just hit the springs to have a really weak value, and after doing that and expanding one of the pistons, it seemed to be behaving a lot better. But I realized another problem too was that I didn't have enough springs. I needed to be able to compress two blocks, but I only had one spring, which only lets you compress one block. So I just fixed that quickly, and after doing that, now you can see I can rotate the lock body, and the pin is being held in place right now. It's not able to fall out of the top sleeve. So the next thing I did was add in a bunch of logic gates like this, and what these are going to do are just make it easy for me to toggle all of the pistons on at the same time. Now to be honest, I'm not entirely sure why I did this since the pistons all have toggle functions, so if I just turn that on, if I press the key to activate them, they stay activated unless I press the key again. Basically, I'm just doing the exact same thing with logic gates. I think at the time, I thought it might be a little bit easier for tying in other systems if I already had the logic gates sitting there, which may have been true, but that's sort of the way I did it. After doing that, I could toggle on two of the gates for the first pin and have it slide out of the way. So the next thing I wanted to get working were the second and third pins, which I did like this. And after that, I got the fourth pin working. And the fourth one's actually interesting. It only opens if none of the pistons are expanded. So only at its very lowest will it allow the lock to open. Now, I decided to get rid of all the logic gates of the pistons, because I did say earlier in the video I didn't want to use the pistons, and that's still true. I wanted to go for an entirely mechanical solution and sort of make that linear movement myself. Now, I replaced those pistons with just wooden blocks. I'll be able to move up and down. And now what I'm going for are four wheels. And this is because I want to make a combination lock. I decided at this point I didn't really want a key design or anything like that. I thought a combination lock would be pretty cool. So I need four combination wheels for that. And I'm just making something simple here with a bunch of plus signs that I can move around. And now for the next thing I want to do is add on four hinges onto a bunch of wooden blocks, and then have those blocks be pinned in place. And if I just move my lock body up, move a single wooden block kind of in between the combination wheel, the lock body, and those hinges, and then put the hinges underneath the lock body. Now if I attach two hinges to that wooden block, and add a brace from the bottom hinge to the hinges in the bottom, and if I add another brace to the top hinge, to the hinge that I put on one of the pins, I get this sort of mechanism that when I move over to the center, what's supposed to happen is it's supposed to push the pin all the way up, and when I move it further out, it's supposed to pull the pin back down. Now the hinges sort of just fold in weirdly, and this is because they're not sharing a common axle, which they need to do, so it's not entirely working. Now if I attach a brace to the wooden block uh, coming from one of the combination wheels, as I rotate the wheel, you can see it pulls in and out that block, and what it's supposed to be doing is pushing up and down that pin. But again, the hinges are just sort of weird, so they're not really working. What I realized I could do is just get rid of those pistons and instead use swivel joints for this. So after hooking up the swivel joints to the same connection points, now as I rotate the wheel, you can see it sort of pushes up and down the piston. Now, I'm still having a lot of problems with it really binding and not wanting to push up and down that pin at all. But here, I'm sort of able to create that just by manually pulling it back and forth, but managed to take quite a lot of force to do that. So to reduce the amount of force it's taking to move up and down this pin, I realized there's a few things I can do. So the first is shrinking down the hinge size on the bottom of the piston, and this allows it to slip into its sleeve easier so it doesn't bind up. The next thing I did was just sort of making it easier for testing. If I had a powered wheel onto the combination wheel, I could just automatically have it spin instead of having to drag it around using the drag tool. So that helps, but the next thing I wanted to do was decrease the gap between the two sleeves, since it seemed like the blocks were getting caught in between them. So I did that next, and you can see it's still getting stuck a little bit, but it seems to be performing a bit better. So I shrunk down the size of the smooth surface block, and actually increased the size of the pin. Now by increasing the size of the pin, it lets it tilt less inside the sleeve, and this keeps it more straight so it has less of a chance of getting caught on one of the edges. And after I did that, it still does get caught, but it's much, much less frequent. And for the most part, I'm able to just freely rotate the combination wheel and push up and down the pin. So after I got that one pin set up, things seemed pretty good, but it wasn't gonna be super easy just to copy this over to everything else. My main problem is that I actually made the mechanism a little bit too big. So it's three blocks wide, but the pins are so close together, really all the space I have is two blocks. So the first thing I did is just simplified my encoder wheel a little bit, and then I just copied over my pin solution for the fourth pin to the second pin, since those aren't gonna interfere since they're far enough apart. And then finally, I just connected that up, and after I tried to make it work, it, it was working, it was just binding up a lot, which is weird because it was just a straight up copy of what I had before. So I just extended the size of the sleeve a little bit so that the hinge was always inside of the sleeve, and after doing that, 
It seemed to mostly fix the problem, it basically moved up and down effortlessly. Just odd that it ended up breaking for like no reason. So the next thing I did was copied over that entire mechanism on the bottom, flipped it over to the other side, and then offset it a little bit so that it connects to pins 1 and 3. And just giving it a quick run here without having it connected to any of the pins. It seemed to behave, but they ended up pinning against the blocks on the other side. So what I did is just lowered them a little bit so that they're always able to slip past each other. And after doing that, it seemed to work fairly well. So, I tried for a while working on some weird 4 barred linkage mechanisms, and this did end up working to move the pin up and down, but I realized this was just overcomplicating it badly, and what I could just use is a single linkage bar to connect it up to the right side, and that worked fine. So I did that for pins 1 and 3, and after doing that, now all of the pins are hooked up. So here I ended up putting in the combination, and lock rotated and opened up, but I realized there were two problems. The first one is that this bottom piece still wants to rotate and actually just fall all the way down. And the second one is that all of these pins, you can see, have fallen down already, so I have no way of relocking this once it unlocks. So to tackle the first problem, all I have to do is add in a little bit of a wooden bar like this, so that as the lock body begins to rotate, it gets caught on this bar like you see here, and won't go any further than that. Now I ended up setting this just a little bit too high, and it was possible to end up coercing down. So what I did is just lower down this bar just by a single block, and after doing that, it gets caught on it and absolutely cannot fall down anymore. So my second problem were these pins that were still down like this. Since now if I try to relock this, they're going to be in the way, and they need to be up. So to keep them up, what I decided to do is add in a couple wooden blocks like this, and I to rotate them just a little bit, and by putting on a couple long blocks and then using a build surface to cover the whole thing. Now if I get the combination right and rotate the lock, you can see those pins get caught on the build surface and get held up. So now if I try to relock this by moving it back in place, it gets a little bit stuck, but after just adjusting the pins just a little bit, I end up getting it to relock and now the lock is, well, locked again. So one of the last things I wanted to do is move up the combination wheels from the bottom of the lock to the top of the lock. So just moving them up directly like this didn't really work. The mechanism ended up binding up on itself and basically what I need is to keep the wheels on the bottom like I had there. I can get rid of the power wheel part of them, I just need to make sure I keep all of the arms the same. And I could just move up the wheels to the top. And I need some way of transferring the rotation of the wheels on top to the bottom. So I also decided to add in a little bit of a screen here and this is so I can see what the number is in all these wheels. Now I don't have those numbers in quite yet, but I'll put them in, in a second. So after messing around for a while, I realized I was also gonna need to expand out my wheels on top uh, so that they're two blocks apart instead of just one, and this is so I can make room to put in the four bar linkages. Now the four bar linkages, what they sound like, they're just going to be four bars, but to make them work I need four swivel joints on both the top wheels and the wheels that I have on the bottom. So I put in those swivel joints on top, and now I'm putting those in in the bottom as well, and now I'm putting in the four bars, which I'm just going to use braces for since it ends up being really easy. And after doing that, now as I try to rotate that fourth pin, that rotation gets carried to the bottom, and it's able to still move the pin up and down. And actually I did that with all of the pins as well. So now I have 16 total bars I guess, but I have four, four of our linkages. Now finally I wanted to add in the actual shackle part of the lock, and to do that, I'm just using a single wooden bar, and that build surface that I've had before, I actually thought would work really well for this. So in the locked position, it's going to block that shackle from being able to lift up, but when it unlocks, it moves over to the side of it, and this creates a gap that the shackle is able to lift up from. So to make that shackle, I just made a big wooden rectangle, but it just falls straight down. This is because I have nothing holding it up on top of the machine. So I build up the frame of the lock body a little bit so that I can have the shackle rest on it, and this prevents it from falling down. Then after pinning everything in place, now as I give it a quick run here, you can see the shackle ends up being stuck. It's not able to be removed in this lock position because of the way that the build surface is in the way. And I'll show you in a second that once it's unlocked, I'm able to pull it out. But first, I also wanted to get these encoding wheels working. So I just wanted a big wheel that had a bunch of numbers on it. And just by editing the texture file, I actually got pretty far, but there's definitely some big problems. Now, one of them was just that all my numbers were flipped the wrong way. So I just had to remember to do that, and then a lot of them were just ordered wrong since it wasn't immediately obvious how I was supposed to put down the numbers so that they would appear in the game as a constant loop. So I got that working, and after I did that, I just changed all the textures of those wheels to the number texture. And this is the really weird part, I kind of have to reverse engineer the code. So what I'm doing is checking to see when the two smooth surface blocks are in that gap between the two sleeves. And when that happens, that means that the pin's going to be able to be pushed over and therefore the lock can be unlocked. So I have to check for when that happens and then see what what the code is on the wheel to figure out what I need to put in to get the lock to unlock. So I find out that the code is 3, 5, 7, and then 8-ish. And after doing that, the build surface moves over and the shackle is able to pull right out. And I have a little bit of trouble relocking the lock. It's not like it's a big deal, as long as I pull it over fast enough, it's not a problem. But things seem to go a bit smoother if I put in the code 5686 or just something around that, as it pulls down all of the pins. And then when I try to relock it, 
The pins on top end up having a really easy time settling in, but I got that working. So the last thing I did was added in a powered wheel, and this is directly attached to that rotating piece, uh, the rotating sleeve, I mean. So instead of me having to drag that back and forth to get it to lock and unlock, I could just press O to open and then C to close. So I just put in the combination now, and when I pressed O, the whole thing moved over. And now finally putting in that locking combination, which isn't totally necessary, but definitely helps. And pressing C, it moves it over and relocks the lock. So finally, I just put panels over everything to keep everything secretive, except the top, because I kind of wanted to show that off, even though it's probably insecure to do that, but it's a lock I made in the game, and I'm showing you guys the combination, so security isn't really my top priority right now. So guys, thanks for watching. I thought this lock turned out pretty well. There's definitely a few things I could have done to make it a bit simpler and potentially a little bit stronger, though I'm not sure about that. Probably the biggest thing is the encoder wheels. Did not need to be as complicated as they were with all the linkages. I think I could have used a simpler setup to accomplish basically the same thing. But this still worked, so I'm happy with how it turned out. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to ask below. Until next time.